Eric has a particular way of centering and bringing up his clay. When he's pulling the mound open and up initially, his outside hand does more work than his inside hand. In other words, he is pushing with the outside hand more than he is pulling with the inside fingers. Eric uses a lot of water when he throws and he uses a sponge in his outside hand until he's ready to start ribbing his piece. He always mops up the water from the inside so as to avoid an S-crack. One of the things that Eric does while he demonstrates for his class is he talks about the art of ceramics and he challenges his students to go and find out more about the history of ceramics and other ceramic artists. Loosely, I emphasize the loosely, based on bowls that were made by someone named Lucy Reed, who's a famous, was a famous um, potter trained in Austria who uh, then worked most, of, worked most of her life in England. At this point, Eric is using two metal ribs, one in each hand. Eric does six or seven pulls with these metal ribs where the inside hand is doing most of the work and the outside hand is just stabilizing the clay as he's pulling out from the inside. As the clay gets thinner and thinner, Eric is compressing it by using these ribs on the inside and the outside, and you can see the clay bulging out as he pushes from the inside to open this piece. Notice that Eric stops before he gets to the rim. Having wiped out the water from the inside, Eric is now using a simple wooden tool to open the bottom a little more and to smooth it out so that there's a nice curve in there. do is I'm going to support, I'm just supporting on the outside with, a, with one finger. It doesn't really matter what finger. It's very dry. Oh, you want it that way. Okay.
and I'm just using the rib is just running along the edge it's basically following the line of my finger and since I have bony fingers that means that the line will not be exactly straight While altering this piece, Eric uses a plastic rib called a Cheryl mud tool. He prefers to use the red kind, which is much softer and for which there is less danger of going through the clay accidentally. Ones that I really, really like to use for this are the red version of this because they're so soft. And the bonus at the end of this video is when Eric explains to us all his philosophy and his thinking behind altering. Okay. Altering is generally that we we kind of seem we see it seems like a lot of people approach it from the standpoint of saying, "Oh, let's do something random." I really like it when it's random. But what you're better off with is sort of setting up a pattern. creating that pattern and then creating a methodology to make it uneven. By using my bony finger as a, as a guide, I guarantee that that line will not be even. And therefore what I get is I get something that picks up that sense of randomness even though it's still based on a logical pattern. And a lot of times if you go deep down into, into things that look random, you can eventually figure out a pattern within it. You know, you can find an underlying grid, or you can find a series of parallel lines or something, and you go, oh, wait a minute. So um, I think that if you want to play with that, you know, try starting out, you know, look at your pot, figure out some pattern that would work on it, and then try to then figure out a way to subvert that pattern. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>